Hi everyone, it's awesome to be here today at the Edscale event. My name is Hagai, and I lead AI platform engineering at Databricks Mosaic AI, where we help thousands of customers build AI-powered applications. Today I'm going to talk to you about open innovation in AI and why I believe open innovation is a critical ingredient in unlocking AI's massive potential. So for the past five years, we've all been really bathing in the warmth of an AI summer, and it, it feels awesome. AI has been the talk of the day for the past couple of years at this point, starting with the tech crowd here in Silicon Valley, as well as tech communities across the world, and even across broader crowds. The search term AI is currently at an all-time high, and the trend we're seeing here suggests we have not hit peak popularity just yet. And with broad interest, we've also seen investments in the field picking up steam really rapidly. If you look at the chart here, Gen AI investments grew ninefold in 2023 alone, reaching $25 billion. And over 1,800 new AI companies were founded in 2023 alone, up 40% from the previous year. Now we're also seeing AI applications gaining real popularity out there. 70% of developers are reported to either be using or planning to use AI tools as part of their development process this year. That's according to Stack Overflow 2023 survey that spanned over 90,000 developers worldwide. OpenAI ChatGPT, arguably the poster child of generative AI, is reported to be the fastest growing consumer internet app of all times, hitting over 100 million users in just under two months. Another poster child of AI, Waymo, reported doing over 700,000 trips with public riders and no human driver in 2023 alone, doing over 7 million miles across San Francisco, LA, and Phoenix. But despite all the positive and warmth of this AI summer, we've all seen AI winters before, where it was not always so warm and friendly. If we take a look back, since Turing proposed the idea of thinking machines, and McCarthy coined the term we all use today, artificial intelligence, that was done sometime in the 1950s, We've actually gone through a cycles of AI boom and then bust. The first AI winter took place in the 1970s. Marvin Minsky was a Turing Award winner, the co-founder of MIT's AI lab, and really a luminary in the field. Back then, publicly predicted that within just a decade, humanity will create a machine with the general intelligence of an average human. That prediction, alongside similar predictions of other experts in the field, set really high and probably largely unrealistic expectations, which were then not met, and that led to the complete decimation of AI R&D funding, giving us the first AI winter. We then had the second AI winter at the heels of a resurgence in AI R&D excitement, primarily around expert systems, which were designed to capture and encode human experts' knowledge, and then allow the AI to apply that knowledge. Now, unfortunately, despite the hype and excitement, Expert system turned out to be fragile, expensive and slow to develop, and then not really robust for changes. Again, leading to another decimation in R&D investments in AI and the second AI winter. Since then, we've gradually started seeing picking up with the internet taking over our lives, big data, machine learning. That winter turned into spring with the AlexNet deep learning moment of 2012 leading up to today's new Gen AI boom and AI summer with generative AI really astonishing everyone with the capabilities for text generation, image generation, speech generation, and even video generation. But if we take a look back, both AI winters came at the heels of really high expectation and excitement that then were unfortunately not met. Now, I personally experienced the impact of the second AI winter as a young software engineer early in my career. I was just out of graduate school where I built expertise in computer vision, joined an exciting startup building AI systems for automated detection of defects in electronic components. That work was super exciting, very challenging. The picture on the left shows the younger version of me and that refrigerator-like device with the traffic lights sticking out was a sophisticated system comprising of robots, actuators, special lighting, special cameras, and of course the crown jewels, sophisticated computer vision and machine learning algorithms. Now, despite the technology we've built being AI powered, we were intentionally careful back then not to brand our company, products, or technology as AI. 
We're still experiencing the AI winter, and AI was frowned upon and would not help us land customers nor investments. And most other companies in our industry, just like us, fiercely avoided mentioning the term AI at all. That was the impact of an AI winter. Now, with all that said about the past and present of AI, the interesting question is, what will be the future? If you look at the technology hype cycle model, which was developed by Gartner, it actually offers an interesting mental model for the maturity and adoption of new technologies. And many, including myself, believe that that model applies largely to AI today. Now, almost two years ago, powerful AI demos such as ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion came online, blowing people's mind with what modern neural network-based AI is capable of. That was GenAI's technology trigger moment on the lower left corner of that chart. I would argue that today, we are at the peak of expectations. Some of these expectations may indeed be inflated, some may be real, and we're definitely seeing a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out on the investment community that is pouring a lot of money into the field. Now, the interesting question is, going forward, will we hit the trough of disillusionment? If we do, how hard is it going to be? And what is our path towards a plateau of productivity and a future where AI is successful? So, what does it take for us to sail towards a future where AI is ubiquitous and successful? I want to offer three key requirements for AI's future success. The first one is that we shift gears. We move from being model-centric to being system-centric. Those of us who have tried to build and deploy a real-world production-grade AI application know that the model, the AI model, is just one piece of that puzzle. It's an important piece. It's just one piece out of a few pieces that need to work together within an AI system. Next, we need more capable foundation models. Foundation models are the backbone of any world-class AI system. And while models such as Llama, Gemini, Claude, or GPT, they really have gone a long way in recent years in terms of their capabilities, there's still a lot of room for growth for things like multimodality, context length, multilingual support, reasoning, tool use, and this is just naming a few of the gaps. And then, last but not least, cost efficiency is a critical requirement for AI success. As long as the cost of serving AI models and systems remain high, the economical viability of AI applications remains very limited. Now, with these requirements in mind, I'd like to share a hot take. My hot take is that open innovation is the key ingredient for AI success. It's going to enable all these requirements I mentioned earlier and many others and even accelerate them. Now, what does open innovation mean? It means publishing AI research. It means open sourcing code for models and AI infra. It means making model weights and training data sets available for the community. There are other important ingredients for AI success, of course, but open innovation is arguably one of the most important ingredients that is an enabler for many others. Let's dive into this hot take. Starting with shifting our thinking from AI models to AI systems. At Databricks, we work with thousands of enterprise customers, many of which are actively building applications leveraging AI. Now, we talk a lot to our customers and we learn a lot from them. And a couple of months ago, some of my colleagues at Databricks, together with academics, published a blog post sharing an important observation after talking to thousands of customers. That observation is that it's AI systems, much more than just models, that are required in order to build world-class applications powered by AI. Now, a few key examples for great AI systems available today include popular consumer as well as enterprise applications, OpenAI ChatGPT, Microsoft Bing, Perplexity, as well as an AI product very popular by Databricks customers, the Databricks Assistant. Implementing each one of these AI systems, as well as many others, is very complex and hairy. It requires implementing design patterns such as RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, Multi-Step LLM Chain, function calling, tool use, to name just a few. Now, luckily, we've seen massive innovation coming out of the open source community and academia with open source tools that enable building, evaluating, optimizing, and deploying AI systems quickly and reliably. To name just a few of the key open source projects out there for that, Langchain for LLM chains, Llama Index for data ingestion and indexing, AutoGPT for building agents, DSPy for end-to-end -end system optimization, Milvas for vector search, and again, the list goes on. 
Each one of these projects has been used by tens of thousands of developers and counting. What's even more beautiful is that each one of these projects has been developed by hundreds of developers, sometimes even thousands, across companies, countries, and continents. Together, the community is building tools that enable the community itself to build better tools and better AI systems. Now, moving over to the second requirement, the need to have highly capable foundation models. Here are some of the top AI models built in the last couple of years. Each one of these models is highly capable in complex tasks for language and image understanding and generation. And really, each one of these models helped pave the path for AI. But these models have another important thing in common. Each one of these models was made possible thanks to open innovation, thanks to open research, other open models, software libraries, data sets, as well as openly shared knowledge. Two highlights of open innovation enabling these models I'd like to make is, first of all, the Transformer architecture, which is open research published by Google researchers back in 2017 in the famous Attention is All You Need paper. Second is PyTorch. PyTorch is today the backbone of the vast majority of AI models out there today. Without these two open innovations, as well as many others, we would have likely moved much, much more slowly on the path to develop state-of-the-art AI. An anecdote of the importance of open innovation for progress in foundation models is my own personal experience training DBRX. DBRX is a mixture of experts, or MOE, model. We trained at Databricks which at the time of release was one of the best open models out there, and it got us and the model a lot of both community and media attention. Building DBRX was done in a relatively short amount of time, was a very tall order. It would not have been possible without PyTorch as the backbone for the model architecture, training, and deployment. And even more so, it would not have been possible without a very close collaboration we were fortunate to have with the PyTorch team. Open innovation also means we contribute our work back to the community. And so we open source DBRX. We contributed back to projects such as PyTorch, Megablocks, LLM Foundry, and others. And we also sat down with the PyTorch team to write down our learnings on training mixture of experts model and sharing these learnings back with the community in a detailed blog post we've published together. Now we've seen many new MOE models trained subsequently, benefiting from this open innovation. This is exactly the power of open innovation that it builds on top of other open innovations. Now, thanks to this open innovation, we now have a rich ecosystem of open foundation models that are just as good as closed models. If you look at the chart here, it's exciting to see clearly, first of all, how much AI has progressed over just the last couple of years. Just look at that y-axis to see how much models have gotten better in this short amount of time. The other very exciting thing to see is just how much the gap between closed and open models have gotten smaller, and I expect this trend to continue. Now, all of these models we just discussed are extremely computationally intensive, and hence extremely costly to deploy. How computationally intensive and how costly? Let's take as an example the new Llama 3.1 405 billion parameters, one of the best LLMs available today. Let's just look at what it takes to deploy the model for inference. Now, the model has 405 billion parameters. And assuming we're deploying it with an optimized 8-bit per parameter, it's going to take us about 405 gigabytes of memory on the GPU for inference. Now, considering the compute requirements, an LLM forward pass, that's a basic inference operation that generates the next token, that requires about two flops, or floating point operations, for each model parameter to predict the next token. This means operating, generating a single token requires about 810 gigaflops. To deploy it, we need a strong GPU, and we might go for the NVIDIA H100 GPU, one of the best GPUs available today. Each one of these GPUs has 80 gigabytes of RAM. So to deploy this specific model for inference, we need about eight H100 GPUs, giving us 640 gigabytes of GPU memory and just enough compute petaflops, about 16 petaflops, to allow us to generate about 2,000 tokens per second. Such a deployment is going to set us back about $50 per hour on one of the major cloud providers out there. 
that comes out to a pretty hefty cloud bill of just over $400,000 a year. And this is just for one deployment that will get us about 2,000 tokens per second, roughly equivalent to handling a load of about one request per second. Just imagine the cost of deploying this model for prediction at scale. Again, luckily, and thanks to the open innovation, there are many impactful initiatives in the AI research and open source communities that are targeting this specific challenge of efficient AI deployments. I've highlighted a few projects here. There are definitely hundreds of others, from Flash Attention, Medusa, and DeepSpeed out of the open research community, through Hugging Face TGI, VLLM, and others on the open source community. Each one of these projects is tackling the problem of cost-efficient deployment at scale. One open innovation project I'd like to highlight is SGLang. SGLang is an open source project with the mission to enable fast and efficient serving of large AI models. SGLang leverages open research with things like Flash Attention, Radix Attention, Torch Compile, SLORA, and many others. What's interesting about SGLang is SGLang is open research built on top of open research. And as you can see on the chart on the right, it actually delivers state-of-the-art performance for serving models even as large as the LAMA 405B we discussed earlier, offering best-in-class throughput as well as latency. Okay, we're at the end of the talk, and if you'll take just one thing out of this talk, I'd like it to be that open innovation is key to AI's future success. And why is that? First, it helps us build better AI systems and better AI models. Second, it enables deploying AI efficiently and at scale. And third, and probably most importantly, it accelerates AI development through code reuse, knowledge sharing, as well as open collaboration. And with that in mind, I wish all of us to continue enjoying a long and warm AI summer filled with open innovation. Thank you for your time.